What I'm going to tell you about Bitcoin today may shock you, and I assure you that no one has ever told you this Bitcoin is once again the talk of the town, and as of March 31st, the value of one Bitcoin is around $70,000. Some see a future in Bitcoin, while others think that everything will end in an instant. This mystery and this uncertainty in Bitcoin is a reality, and this is exactly the point to think about. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency invented in 2008 by an unknown person or group using the name Satoshi Nakamoto. In 2009, when it was released as open source software, people started using it Bitcoin emerged because governments failed to manage the current monetary system. Well, and this monetary system is now obsolete and cannot keep up with the times. According to Satoshi, there had to be a monetary revolution. So who was this Satoshi Nakamoto? A guy named Satoshi Nakamoto was working on a project called Bitcoin and he completed it and he uploaded it as a PDF right below his announcement which was the first white paper in cryptography. The white paper is actually a technical document that outlines the problem that the project aims to solve and the methods and details of how to solve it. What he wanted to find a solution was to bring the world banking system, electronic cash system, and in his statement he stated that this system was very, very much needed. In total, there would be 21 million bitcoins, and this was created in a way that could not be increased. So just like gold in the world was limited, bitcoin was limited in number, and this was one of the things that made it valuable. Bitcoin was an invention against the problems of the world banking system. This new technology grew like an avalanche among people. In 2010, the first Bitcoin exchange was made in the same year. Ten famous $25 pizzas were ordered in exchange for 10,000 Bitcoins. Before the end of 2010, Bitcoin increased 10 times. In 2011, Bitcoin seminars were being held. Bitcoin increased 10 times more and 10 times more. After 2012, it attracted the attention of businessmen and reached up to $1,200 in 2013. Of course, after this year, thanks to its secrecy, it started to be used in illegal business. And now bad news started to be made about it. It progressed in a horizontal line for five years until 2018. And then you already know what happened. In fact, what interested me was the story of Bitcoin. But the name behind it, that is, the brain that built this system, is much more curious Satoshi Nakamoto, who was almost a renaissance man who provided a technological development as important as the invention of the internet, who was Satoshi Nakamoto. Why did he never show himself against this system he made and just disappeared? Gavin Anderson was a developer to whom Satoshi Nakamoto handed over the Bitcoin security key. In 2010, his name was listed after Satoshi on the official Bitcoin website. But one day Satoshi removed his email address from the website. This was one of the first steps that Satoshi had given up on something. Gavin was later invited to speak at the CIA. He also reported it to Satoshi Nakamoto and then received a message from Satoshi. I wish you hadn't kept referring to me as a mysterious shadowy figure. The press might see this as a way to pirate Bitcoin. Gavin never heard from Satoshi again after this message. The founder of Bitcoin had completely disappeared. The last message from him was dated October 13th, 2010. No one knew who this person was. First of all, was it a person or a community? The first of these was that he registered himself as a Japanese man, born in 1975 on the blog page he opened and talked to people. Apart from that, we also see that he added the Bitcoin original website to his blog. There is a history of conversation dating back to February 15th, 2009. We see that Nakamoto is in constant correspondence with people. He exchanged a lot of ideas about Bitcoin, but one person was much more interested in it than others, Hal Finney. He was the first person to tweet about Bitcoin and was also the first Bitcoin sent to him by Satoshi Nakamoto. Hal Finney was a cryptographer as well as a software developer. In the forum Let's Talk Bitcoin, he talked about how to improve Bitcoin and how to debug it, but in 2009, he was unfortunate to contract ALS. He was becoming more and more debilitated every day, unable to write or even speak. Hal Finney passed away in 2014, 
There were many who thought he was Satoshi because the year he died was the last year Satoshi Nakamoto was active. I never got another message from Satoshi. The second name that is thought to be Satoshi Nakamoto is Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto. Yes, his real name is completely Satoshi Nakamoto. Dorian Nakamoto who is a 64-year-old physicist and he was indeed born in Japan. What makes the story interesting is that Dorian Nakamoto lived in different houses about two kilometers apart in the same state as Hal Finney. One is Hal Finney, who was one of the first to talk to the founder of Bitcoin and made the first Bitcoin exchange. Another person with the same name as the founder, and coincidentally they both lived within two kilometers of each other in California. Dorian had the conditions of a typical middle-class American on the street. He had an old model car and a very modest life compared to the Bitcoin founder. Bitcoin's founder Satoshi was interestingly leaving two spaces after the dot in his messages. You can easily see this in the white paper and in his messages. The interesting thing is that Dorian Nakamoto allegedly drew attention to the fact that Dorian Nakamoto used two spaces after the dots, just like Satoshi in his 2014 statement on I'm not him. I say allegedly because I could not find any source of this article Dorian. I guess he will not have paid much attention that he forgot to put two spaces in this part. Dorian Nakamoto was even the subject of Newsweek magazine because of his name, but he denied the allegations on this issue. The Bitcoin face, the mystery man behind the cryptocurrency, and I'm not Satoshi Nakamoto. Maybe the person we were looking for was Dorian Nakamoto. Far from strange theories, his name is the first option that comes to mind, but the situation is a bit complicated. The reason for this is the last message sent by the real Satoshi Nakamoto. In the message, on March 7, 2014, he wrote, I am not Dorian Nakamoto. The interesting thing is that Hal Finney died exactly five months after this message. The year Hal Finney died coincides with the year the Bitcoin founder was last active. Maybe Hal Finney was Satoshi Nakamoto. Maybe Dorian was Nakamoto. Or maybe Satoshi was neither Hal Finney nor Dorian Nakamoto. Hal Finney could not have been Nakamoto because he was someone who saw the Bitcoin project and got involved later. It was also impossible for him to send a message in 2014 because at that time he could only move his head due to ALS disease. Dorian Nakamoto, in my opinion, has too humble a life to be the father of Bitcoin and does not seem to be capable of inventing Bitcoin with the education he has received. He seems to be a victim just because of his name. In recent years, Craig Wright made an interesting confession that I am Satoshi Nakamoto himself. So you're going to show me that Satoshi Nakamoto is you? Yes. Many believe he is Nakamoto, so much so that they point to a post he made in 2009 as proof. But it is very strange that he writes about Bitcoin from different accounts, both as Satoshi and as Craig Wright. Also, when he says that he will move Bitcoin from the Genesis block, which no one can access, and that he has the necessary keys for this, and does not take any initiative in this regard, it means that he is a deceiver who makes a premium on Bitcoin. Started to be considered. But the person I am going to tell you about now is different from all of them. Nick Sabo, Satoshi Nakamoto, showed the sources he referenced when he created Bitcoin in eight articles. But there was an important project that he did not refer to. Nick Sabo's project called Bitgold. Bitgold had a very similar structure to Bitcoin, according to the theory that Bitcoin was the original. It was called Bitgold, and it took Nick Sabo 10 years from 1998 to 2008 to turn the idea of Bitgold into the reality of Bitcoin. He first posted the idea of a decentralized cryptocurrency called Bitgold on his blog in 2005. But Nick Sazabo did something very interesting later. He changed the date of the Bitgold project post from 2005 to 2008, the year Bitcoin was invented. He also changed the timestamps in the comments to show only the time without the date, which is proof that he is updating the date. The reason why he did this is probably to show that a project similar to Bitcoin never existed before. Bitcoin, that is, if he had shown Bitgold as a project that was done in 2005, we would have understood that he did the Bitcoin project in 2008, which was identical in many ways. In a way, he would have revealed his identity, which is why in the references section in the Bitcoin white paper, Nick Sabo's Bitgold, he also explained that it was not his project. Apart from that, someone who has been trying to invent a decentralized currency since 1998 and has been working on Bitgold for years, interestingly ends all his research after the invention of Bitcoin. Nick, who was active in blog posts until 2009, almost completely loses this activity after 2009. 
Satoshi's writing style, the words he used, so when analyzed stylometrically and compared to the other candidates, there were many similarities between him and Nick Sabo. Even the white papers they used were similar. Both reports were written in Times New Roman and had the same word patterns and sequencing. In my opinion, Nick Szabo had to hide his identity in the Bitcoin project. For some unknown reason from the very beginning, Nick Szabo is the strongest candidate for Satoshi Nakamoto, the founder of Bitcoin. In fact, it doesn't matter who the person who created Bitcoin is. What matters is why Bitcoin was created. When I answer this, you will understand why Satoshi Nakamoto hides his identity, privacy. You launder money and remain hidden. You carry out all kinds of dirty work through the crypto network and remain hidden. And you can manage the money coming in as you wish and grow it tens or even hundreds of times. Isn't it so they can change the value of Bitcoin at will? So who increases or decreases the value of this Bitcoin a system that can earn billions of dollars with crypto assets, whose value can be raised or lowered in an instant by manipulating people who invest? Have you ever thought that the banking sector in the world, why this cryptocurrency was accepted and why Bitcoin, which was once used even for illegal purchases on the deep web, was not banned despite all this. Moreover, why was Bitcoin allowed when there are many investment instruments such as gold investment funds and stocks? So why was this new virtual currency, Bitcoin, not blocked when it was obvious that the share in the P would decrease? The reason for all this was probably the deliberate and planned creation of Bitcoin by some secret forces that have a say in the world. For them, Bitcoin may be the greatest invention of this century because they can carry out all kinds of illegal activities through crypto networks and operate in complete secrecy. This is probably why Satoshi Nakamoto hid his identity like a shadow with no banks and no names in between. Whoever the person or group named Nakamoto was, he was just a puppet. He was used to build the system, and that was it. Should there be such a decentralized virtual currency in today's world? Maybe yes, but maybe it should have been created by states, and its secrecy should have been controlled by states. All these are just ideas, of course. So who is Satoshi Nakamoto, and does the creation of Bitcoin have a purpose other than what we know? Let's discuss this in the comments. You are on the Interesting Topics channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more valuable content. See you in the next video.